Welcome back to how to build an F-14 Tomcat. It's been a few months since my uh, my last update. Been busy with work, unfortunately, but hey, you gotta pay the bills, gotta make the money to pay for this hobby. Now, a little bit of an update for today, before I go back out of town again tomorrow. Um, pretty much you see the wings are back on the board. I've got a few things up here on the top done. I've got the uh, one of the outer panels on each wing tip is completed. The other one way down there. Try out the new video camera, and uh, pretty much so you got both of the larger panels on the wing tips are done on the top and bottom of both sides. I end up making these couple of panels when I get back. See, I've got again the trailing edge panels on the wing. Those two are done. I've got to put down here inside the the spore wells. I got to fill that out, and then this whole section right through here that'll all be one piece, and then here and here will be separate. Here on the leading edge, I've got the panels that are up under the slats in place. You see there's little gaps here. These are actually uh, that's where the, the slat hinge tracks are on the full scale. There's seven total. On the model, I will probably only have four or even three. And I'll have one here, one down here, and then I'll have one here in the center. And then most likely there will be a servo mounted here at the bottom with a linkage coming through this one. And then on a servo here with a linkage coming through through there. So there will still be there'll be five out of the seven. It's just three of them will actually be tracks and two of them will be uh, actuating push rods. And then the other two will just they'll be there mostly for looks. Now um, both flaps are completed on both wings. The uh, they're gonna be molded all in one piece, just like you see it here. The full scale has a three piece flap, so you've got this one, this one, and then this one, they're all separately actuated on the full scale to make life easy. Just gonna have a one piece flap on each side. Now um, you see the same thing is done here on the other on the other wing panel. So it's it's ready to have the same uh, same stuff done to it. The bottom for those who don't remember that, you can see it's getting a little bit more uh, getting covered up more and more as we go along. You can kind of see the the shape of the one piece panel on the bottom, and then again you got the tip panels there as well. And then here on the flap you can see as well as everything's done on that. Um, haven't done much to the fuselage. I've just been doing filling, sanding, filling, sanding the whole process over and over. Got the other side with some backlight so you can see the uh, the nose cone. Is about 90% done. I've got a little bit more uh, filling and sanding to do on that than a base coat, clear coat, polish it, and it'll be ready for molding. The canopy and the windscreen, they're, they're pretty close. You can still you kind of see little lines here and there where there's differences in the shape of it, but it's come a long way since the, the first started. It's about 90% ready to, uh, to mold it as well. Again, I've got just another, maybe one or two more passes a primer some sanding and uh, it'll, then it'll get us another base coat clear coat as well we probably I'll probably use white just uh, I don't know, just, it's a neutral color so don't have much to worry about with it but once that's all uh, painted with the base coat clear coat then it'll get polished wax PVA and then I'll pop molds of that as well so I'll probably do all of this at once the nose cone I'll probably do all those as well the uh, the engine covers they're basically ready to be molded. I've got just a little bit of filling the edges. I got to put a couple a litho plate sheet on each side of those, and they'll be ready for molding. So I'll probably get that done, and I'll probably do both engine pa access hatch covers, the windscreen, the canopy, and the nose cone. I'll probably mold all that at once. And back here along the tail section, you see I've been doing some filling and sanding here on the fuselage on both sides want that stuff to dry out um, that's pretty much about all I've got done on the fuselage been gone for a couple of months working down in the Gulf then took off to jet meet came back home took a couple of days off to do some stuff around the house went back to work and got word that I have to leave tomorrow the night in order to to make some more money <laughs> so that's pretty much where it's at at the moment I got a a cool little thing that a buddy of mine, Ian, out in California, machined up. 
So I can give you guys a good little photo of that. Basically what it is, it's the, uh, the refueling probe nozzle end. It's machined out of, I believe, 6061 aluminum with a little standoff here. Uh, an aluminum tube will get put onto that so it kind of sticks out and then it'll bend over. And what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll cast this out of resin so it's lighter. I mean, this thing here is maybe a couple of grams. It's not very heavy, but I got it mostly for a, a male for a plug. That way I can reproduce them. So once I get it, the tube bent up and all, it'll sit about, you know, probably about right there on the model and it'll retract an all in on be another option included with the kit. So it's just cool little things like this. I get guys that they kind of help me out. So got to got to pass along the the cool stuff when you're working on the hobby with other guys. If you can get somebody who knows how to do machine work who's not too good with composites or fiberglass and whatever, kind of helps everybody else out in the long run. Uh, one thing I'm going to work on when I get back is I've got a a cool project that I'm working in in partnership with with a with another modeler so that'll be something kind of cool I'm actually gonna build up a, a CNC router I'm gonna put it there in the corner that way it'll make a make life as far as cutting out short kits or whatever that I decide to build on them in the future later on I will also better cut out all of the internal structure for the f14 here in-house instead of having to to farm it out like I originally planned to. I've been doing a lot of research on composite uh, laminates and structures and just how to make things much, much stronger and much lighter. I've decided that the, the F-14, I'd like to have it 44 pounds dry. So that'd be no fuel on it except for what's in the UATs. And if it works out that way, I may be able to get a EDF version down to possibly even down to 30 35 pounds so that'll be another option for the guys who want a big f14 but don't want to go turbines so just things i'm looking at a lot of the structure is going to be much different there will be very very little wood involved in areas then there's pretty much the only wood that's going to be there is where you actually need it like landing gear mountings uh servo mounts areas like that but it's gonna be a lot of carbon fiber involved in the airplane a lot of kevlar and a lot of um reinforcement foams for the wing skins and everything it's gonna it's gonna bring up the price of the kit a little bit more not much more maybe a couple hundred bucks but it's gonna make it for a, a better overall airframe and a overall kit in the long run i think uh i'll be pleased with it from what i got planned i think everybody else who decides to purchase one they'll be extremely pleased as well but that's pretty much where we're at uh like i said i gotta go out of town for another two weeks I get back home, got to remodel the kitchen for the wife, that way keep her happy. And then I got that CNC router to build, I'll probably take a couple of videos of that as well. And I've got this uh, this F-16 over here, I got to finish up on it. Um, just give you a little overview of what I've done with it. It's pretty much about 90% as far as I've got to take it. See all the gear doors are in place, I've got all the servo access hatches done. Um, pretty simple airplane to build actually. I'm Yellow Aircraft, they've got some of the, the best kits I think as far as for the pricing. I mean, this kit I think is about six or seven hundred dollars, then another six or seven hundred dollars for the scale landing gear. And uh, I mean, there's really no engineering at all to to deal with it. You just kind of follow the instruction booklet, look at a couple pictures, and off you go. It's a very simple airplane to build. Um, landing the gears in it, all the gear doors are done, all the bulkheads are in place, <clears throat> the ailerons, they're done. Yo, know, it's got a, they've got a really ingenious way of mounting the, uh, the ailerons so the wings are removable. Pretty much you got a couple hinges that go there, you got three, and then you've got these stainless steel tubes that you glue in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you've got a pretty much long rod that, uh, yeah, it just slides through the wing, through the stainless steel tubes into each hinge, and then it goes into the, the torque rod and the fuselage, and it holds it all in place. Pretty ingenious way of doing things. Never th thought about doing something that way, but there's the wing panels. They're ready for fiberglassing. Hopefully, I'll have that done here after a while and be able to concentrate on a couple other projects, and most mostly the F-14 when I get that done. 
like I said, this project I'm working in partnership with, that's going to be a, I mean, a pretty big airplane. It's going to be a 140 inch wingspan, and I'll, uh, I'll wait for them to get started with their YouTube videos before I say anything other than it's going to be another big project on YouTube. But, like I said, that's where we're at. Just want to give you guys an update, let you know I'm still out here, still working too much, but I'm still out here working, taking care of things, trying to get this thing done. I'm still on track for getting molds started around the 1st of August, and hopefully an airframe by the end of the year. It probably won't be sitting on the gear, but at least I'll have an airframe and I'll be able to figure out weights for it. But until next time, you guys have a good week and a good weekend. Hopefully the uh, weather cooperates so everybody can get some good flying time in. So, we will see you in the shop next time.